My name is Mohammed Sharif. I'm the director of the Afro-American Republic Party. Our mission is to serve the best interest of the black population, the black American population of America so that they're able to determine their own future. And there's no better way for one to determine his own future independent of self-governance. And as we know, aligned with American values, we believe in freedom for all. We believe in freedom and liberty for all. And so if that is really true, and if that is not something that is reserved only for particular races, then I think it is something that white America can also be a part of. And by this, I mean that it is something that is as American as patriotism. While we live as black people in America within a powerful nation under subtle colonial rule, it is clear that our current reality falls short of what we deserve. We face poverty, lack political representation, and experience constant abuse from governmental forces and legal institutions. I think we can all understand what that looks like. To bring about the change we seek, we need to deliberately summon a revolution, which is also a value of America. America believes in revolutions. We need to bring forth a revolution for the future generation. So what does this change look like for black Americans concerning self-governance? Firstly, I want to clarify that we can, we are capable of governing ourselves. And this has to be said because for the longest times, especially based on how history unfolded, we were brainwashed and conditioned into thinking that we cannot govern ourselves, that we were physically and spiritually inferior simply because of our skin color. And this is obviously, as we know today, false. It is not real. It is not true. Nobody is inferior to another based on their skin color. If a white person can do something, a black person can do that thing. If, that, if a black person can do something, a white person can do it too. This is the reality of this world. So when it comes to capacity, of course black people in America can govern themselves. And the reason why they need to govern themselves is because America is not treating them the way that it treats other American citizens. So, like any groups of people, we need to recognize that we are a nation already. Not in the physical form of one, but definitely in the non-physical form. And this is true in any situation where you have a group of people. They have a shared history, a shared language, and usually have been mistreated. And so this is what a nation is. And what happens is after these individuals recognize that they deserve better, they establish themselves and they become a collective. And so this is the birth of, of a political organization. And from that point on, what happens is that these individuals are able to define their physical geographical location, their territory. And the most challenging part comes from the point which they have an organization, a political organization, and a defined territory. Because what this means is now they are a threat to their colonial rule. And this is the most challenging, lengthy part of this process of building a nation, confronting your colonial rule. However, as we have seen in history, it is possible to confront them even if you are in a disadvantageous position. It is possible. 
It is all about your willingness to attain true liberty in all of the meaning of that word. And if we are truly people who believe in American values, then we have to understand that that, that should not exclude black Americans. We deserve as well the American quote unquote dream. So we feel the need to govern ourselves for those reasons. We own what? 5% of the wealth being 14%. We have 65% being Europeans who own 80% of the wealth. Already, you already see there, I don't even need to get into more statistics for one to understand that there is clear racial discrimination happening in America, but in a subtle, covert way so that others will not notice. But when you read the numbers, which is produced by the U.S. Census, the government, it is very evident that America is indeed still very much a racist nation. So once these people collectively create a political front and they have defined their location, and just for reference, the South has approximately seven, uh, 20, 20 million uh, black Americans, and it is the only place in America that has the highest population of black people in close proximity. There's nowhere else in America that has that type of situation. We are 40 million. About 20 million of us live in the South. That is a good start. And so, this is possible, and this concept of black American self-governance is not new. Many black leaders have talked about this, but they were not in a position in which they can attain that thing because, of course, they had other challenges. They were too busy fighting for simpler rights. Obviously, we couldn't even attend the same restaurants as white people. So, of course, they had to, of course, break, uh, of course, they had to address that issue before they talk about self-governance. They got us here. The, re the, the, the only reason why we are where we are today and we have all the rights that we have today as black Americans is because our leaders have, have, have fought for it. We had organizations who fought for it to take us to where we are today. And they did not bring us here in this position so that we can stall and be politically in inactive in the sense of going to the next level and producing a better quality of life for the coming generation. They have not brought us here to just stall. They have brought us here so that we can continue on fighting, so that we can get our children to a better quality of life than we had. We can't be comparing ourselves to our past generations. Of course, they realized that what was going on around them was not what they wanted their kids to grow up in. So they died. They fought. They went through so much so that they can get us to where we are. And we owe it to our children to do the same thing. And there's no better way for us to determine our own destiny than having self-governance. There is no better way. There's nothing better than that. And that is just the truth. So what does this mean from the point in which we apply this to reality. Well, this is just a matter of our willingness to achieve true liberty in all the meaning of that word. If we're willing to really achieve and we're actually serious about liberty, because we throw this word around, black liberty, black power, very loosely. And we also throw around the word revolution. But do we really know what a revolution is? Do we really know what black power is? Because we have not seen a revolution here in America for black people, of course. We have not seen black power in America. Not true black power. We have not seen it. All of these things that we throw around loosely, but we're not willing to fight for. We don't know what a revolution truly is if we think that it is something that is non-assertive. You can never gain liberty in a non-assertive manner. That is impossible especially when you're in a violent situation, especially when you're addressing a opposition that is known for being violent. We know this to be true. 
we know this to be true. It does not take you that much research for you to understand that America is one of the most violent nations on this earth, even to date today. This is the truth. It is not my opinion. Go pick up an article about uh, geopolitics. It is not that hard for you to confirm this reality. So what does this mean for us? What is the next step? We have to support this idea of bringing black America together under one umbrella. It's, very, it's, it's not very clear what, that's, what this looks like because for the longest time we had America, the U.S. government, fighting against our unity. We had the FBI, we had the CIA, especially, notably, in the 60s. They have worked and killed our leaders. They have undermined, villainized, and did everything in their power to prevent us from what we deserve. And do you really think that that same institution will just hand you your rights? You are a fool if you think that's what that will happen. If you want true liberty as a black American, then you must be willing to die for it because that is the true value, the true price of liberty. And so I invite everybody to join this political organization so that we can sit at a table and talk about what liberty looks like. I don't believe that I, I, I have all of the answers, but what I do know is that unity needs to exist within the black American population. Let's sit at a table and talk and discuss our future. Everybody else sits at a table and talks about their future. Why are we not sitting at, at, at a table and talking about our future? Because if you don't sit at a table and talk about your future, that doesn't mean that you're not going to have a future. It just means that you're going to be a subservient, subservient component of somebody else's future. And that is exactly what is happening today. Black people, their art, their talents, it's being exploited. And, and what is it, who, who is it benefiting? Not us. It's not benefiting us. It's benefiting other people because we haven't sat at a table and defined our future and what we expect. So I'm inviting black America, America to sit at a table and talk about their future. That is simply what I'm doing. Come and sit at the same table. These black leaders need, need, needs to come. We have black leaders today. They need to come and sit at the same table and discuss their future. And of course, we have individuals who are not black, who support human rights. We have black, Amer uh, black Americans and also white Americans and everybody in between who supports human rights and liberty and justice. Those individuals are obligated to also support this cause because, of course, you can't claim and say that you are for justice and equality, but, but when it comes to black people, you take a step back because that means that you're a part of the problem. You are against freedom and justice when you sit back when it comes to black people. If you are for freedom and justice, as you say you are, for everybody, then you must be able to also support black people's efforts for of freedom and justice. You have to. It is your moral obligation to do so. So we invite everybody to join us in the Afro-American Republic Party to help us form black self-determination black liberty, black self-governance. And you can help us by reaching out to contact uh, afroamericanrepublic at gmail.com. We also have our social media platforms uh, that people can reach out to. And uh, we are also, uh, we also have a digital uh, sign-up sheet for people to be able to sign up to join the political organization um, and anybody else who wants to support us can attend our conference, they can attend our social gatherings, and they can promote our efforts in both um, physical form as well as social media form because we live in a, in a, in a day and age in, in which social media is very prominent. So, of course, you can help us in, in the sense of social media as well. And so everybody is welcome to join this effort in one capacity 
or another. Of course, this is an African American Republic Party, so it is an African American Republic Party. But everybody else who is not an African American can certainly uh, support us from uh, the outside. Thank you guys for joining me.